In this video, I want to show you guys a quick way to make nice looking buttons in Godot. We'll be looking at Godot's texture button node to create the settings button that we see on screen. And if we mouse over it, the button grows larger and gets an outline. When we click the button, it darkens, giving us some feedback that the button has been pressed. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Buttons are useful for many things, whether it's opening up UI or progressing the game. As a developer, you'll likely use buttons to give players an ability to interact with the game you've created. But before we do anything, let's take a quick second to look at the button node for prototyping. If you already know about this node, feel free to skip ahead. So we're gonna jump into my forest scene, but you can use any scene that you're working on that you need a button for. And I'm going to add, I'm going to add by right-clicking up here, add child node. And then I'm gonna start typing button and I'm gonna double click this node right here. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit, press and hold alt, and then I'm gonna click and drag this so that I don't accidentally drag anything else. So once I've gotten the button to a spot where I like, I'm gonna add some text to the button just give it a little name like this. And uh, for prototyping, this is the best place to start because it lets you get the ball rolling without spending too much time on assets. I would call this good, but there are a couple settings I personally tweak when doing this. So let's just check this out by running the current scene up here. We're pressing F6. And we see our button. And you're going to notice that when you mouse over or hover, it's gonna change to a little lighter color. When you press, it gets darker and this focus outline comes out. But all things considered, not bad. I'm not really feeling how big this button is, so I'm gonna dial back the font size a little. Um, so if you look at the inspector tab on the right, after selecting the button node, you're gonna notice theme overrides right here and I'm gonna to go to font size. I'm just gonna change this to maybe like four or so. How about five? And you're gonna notice that the font size changes and that changes the size of the button accordingly. And also what I didn't like was the style. Um, you're gonna notice that focus is empty right here. I don't really like the focus showing up so I'm gonna disable that by changing this to style box empty. And then we can run this scene again real quick to see what those changes do. And now when you click it, that border doesn't pop up on the button. The button's a lot smaller and it looks pretty good. Yes, you can customize the button node by messing with the theme and the theme overrides but I just find it a lot easier to create a custom button using my own assets. So let's do that by creating the texture button node. We're gonna select the top of the scene, control A or add control node, add a child node. And then we're gonna go type in texture to bring up the texture button. We're gonna select that. And then uh, on the right side on the inspector, we're gonna just hit the textures and see all the different states that we can customize with our own assets here by throwing in texture files. So I'm gonna hop in over to a sprite or you can use any other art software that you have. And I drew a little gear for the settings button that I wanted and I'm gonna save and export this so that we can bring this into the game. File, export as I'm gonna save it as a PNG, export yes. And then it's right here. I'm gonna open up the assets folder and under tutorial, I'm just gonna drag it in just like that. And so now I need to, I've got the, the PNG file inside my folder and now I need to get it into the button so I'm gonna do that by using an atlas texture. And then um, 
we're going to drag the picture into here and edit the region. And we're going to select this. Close. Cool. So it's right here. I'm going to press Alt again. And I'm going to drag if this freaking works. Hello. Well, that was weird. Just like that. So I'm going to hide the original one. I'm just going to bring it right there. And so now when we mouse over it, we click it, it really doesn't do anything, which is fine. So let's add a different look for when we hover and when we press the button. I'm going to switch over to a sprite real quick and just highlight this, do that a little better, control C, control V, bring it down, but I want to line it up just like that. And then I'm going to control C, control V again, line it up just like that or so. Okay, so when we hover, I think we want to maybe like desaturate it a little bit. So I'm going to go into edit, adjustment, hue, saturation. I'm going to bring down the saturation just a tiny bit, just so that it looks slightly different. I mean, the color, it started off with gray, so it's not going to look too different, but I think that's good enough. I'm going to hit OK. And also, I want to give this a little outline. so. I already have yellow selected, which is what I'm going to use. I'm going to go into edit again, effects, outline, and then we're going to give it an outside outline just like that. Okay, so this is the normal button when we don't hover, when we don't press. This is what it looks like when we hover over the button. And now we want one for when we press the button. I'm going to just select this right here. I'm going to edit adjustments. And this time I'm going to go brightness contrast. And I'm just going to bring the brightness down a little bit to make it a little darker. OK. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to bring this back into Godot. Export as. OK. So now you have your updated file right here. You're just going to. Bring it back into the spot where you originally put it. It's going to update just like that. And so since we're using the same file that's already embedded inside this button, I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to copy this like that. And then I'm going to paste. And I'm going to paste here as well. Now, before we modify the regions for the press and the hover, we want to make these unique so that they don't change the original atlas file that you have right here. So make it unique, make this unique as well. And now let's change the hover. So we'll select this icon right here and then go to edit region. And you're going to notice it's selecting. It's the region that we initially selected, but we want it to look like this. Okay, close that. And you're going to notice if you're successful that the original didn't get changed or modified. And now we're going to do the same for pressed edit region. We're going to bring this down just like that. Now you're going to notice that I'm going to give these ones a one pixel border. And the reason for that is because I want the button to stay in the same place always. And the biggest the button is going to be is when it's getting hovered, it gets a one pixel outline, which is why we need to accommodate for it in the pressed and in the normal cases, just like that. And because the bounding size is the same, 
when you mouse over it, the button's not going to move in a different direction. It's going to stay, stay in the same place. And so we're going to hit F6 or run the current scene. And look at that. Already fantastic. Before we code anything, let's go to Project Settings. And if you type in GUI and go to Common, you want Snap Controls to Pixels to be off. So make sure it looks like this. This is so that uh, your animations that we're going to do right here is going to be smooth. All right, so the button changes depending on what we're doing, but we want to make it look even cooler. So let's go to the scripts folder or whatever folder you want, but I'm going to go to my prototype folder and let's make a script. So right click, create new script. And uh, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it um, test button. That double click to open it up. And uh, because the node is a texture button, we're going to change this texture button. Oops, say button right here. And uh, let's just do the basics. Let's do function ready and pass this. Okay, so what is it that we want to do? We want it so that when you hover over the button, the button grows larger. And then when you remove your mouse from the button, it's going to go smaller again. So let's take a look at the button and then let's see what signals are available to us. And we're going to notice that underneath control, we've got the mouse entered and mouse exited signals, which is what we want to use. So let's see, let's connect to mouse entered, entered, and then we're going to connect and we need to connect it to a function that we don't have yet. So we're going to just make a function um, on mouse entered like that. Um, it, goes to vo it returns void. Just going to pass it. How about we do it for on mouse exited because we know we're going to do that as well. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this, paste it right there, and mouse exited, connect that to this signal, to this function right here. Okay, so now we've done this connection. The good thing about doing the signal connecting in code is that you don't have to redo the connections each time you throw this script onto a button. Okay, so when we enter, when the mouse hovers over the button, we're going to create a tween, which is basically how we animate things in Godot. We're going to change the property of the tween, and it's going to tell you all the different arguments that it requires. So it's going to be self for the object. The property we want to change is going to be scale, and that's a string uh, or node path. And the final value is going to be, so let's see. If we look at the scale right here, it is under layout, transform. The scale is a vector two. So we're going to do vector two, and then we're going to scale it by 10%, like that. And the duration, we're going to give it a tenth of a second. Cool. And then on exited, I'm just going to copy paste the same thing and change this back to one so that it grows 10% and then it shrinks back to normal. And the last thing we have to do is, of course, save it and then throw the script onto the button. And if we run this, look at that. When we hover over it, it grows and then it shrinks again. But it doesn't seem like it's doing that from the center of it. So we need to change the pivot offset. Your button could be any size. 
So this has to be size independent, which is why we're going to create a function called set pivot. It's going to return void and um, it's going to update the pivot offset based on the size of the, the atlas region that you've selected for your button. So we're going to take the property, which is size, divided by two. And so this is going to update the pivot offset, but it has to be run when this button is initialized. So we're going to do it at the start right here, set pivot. And let's just comment things real quick. Initialization, pivot, update. Oh, scale button. Okay. That looks pretty good. Save that, run the scene, and now it's growing from the center. And now whenever you want to use this, you just throw this script that you created into any of the texture buttons that you have, and it'll do exactly this. All right, so let's cover all our bases now and make the button do something. Um, obviously, you could do so many different things with the button, but uh, most importantly, what we want to look at is you select the button node, you go to node to look at the signals, and this time we're going to use the pressed signal right here. Double click this, and this is up to you, but I'm going to take it to the very top forest, which is going to overlook all of what the buttons do when you press something. And I'm going to hit connect. And that's going to open up the forest script that I have. And you can only do this if this node already has a script. So if you don't have a script here, you got to throw it in there. Now right here, if you want to show something like, hey, maybe the player, maybe I want to hide the player. Um, it's this node right here. I'm going to control select it. So control select and drag, and that's going to let you make that node connection. Node connection. Again, it's going to be kind of like imagine if you control click it, then it'll deselect. Control, hold control, select it and drag for that to happen. Okay. Now. Yeah, so we've got the connection. So we're going to reference right here, player, and then we're going to change the property on the player, visible to false. When we press this button, we're going to hide the player. Very simple. I'm going to save that, run the scene. So that when we click this, the player disappears. Obviously, when we click it again, the player's not going to reappear because that's exactly what we did. Okay, and what if we could do like a get tree right here and um, we can just run quit to exit the game. Just like that. So it really depends on you. You can put whatever you need your button to do, but that's kind of how it works. And that's it for me. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.